So I'm so pleased to have Shona come speak to me today um, and just have a little chat about her journey with me. So hi Shona, thank you hi. for being here. Um, so how did you first find me and why were you, why were you looking? Um, well, I was really struggling. Um, I was, my mental health was really, really poor. I'd gone through sort of the NHS. I'd been obviously prescribed tablets and things like that, but the sort of aftercare and whatnot was just non-existent. Um, so I would say I was really searching for help um, in any shape or form I could um, after you know, considering not being here at all. So, um, in a sense, uh, I knew just deep down there was something that I needed to do. I wasn't sure what it was or what form it was going to take, um, but I was just really looking for sort of individuals that I could feel home with um, mm. and um, always found yoga was so soothing for myself, for my mental health, for my body, everything. And I noticed um, Kundalini, uh, Kundalini yoga was an option. So I think that's when yeah. we kind of met and there was just a deep sense of being seen, even though it was like a group setting, there was just something about you that um, <laughs> was just drawn towards. And it was just something that was a very strong sense of I need to learn more about this woman and what she does. And um, yeah, so I just reached out to, and, and being me, I always like to go head first into things. So <laughs> it was a case of I want to learn how to do things. So uh, Reiki had also featured in my sort of journey, I suppose, where I found great relief in Reiki. I don't know why. Um, it was sort of distance Reiki I had, which when I speak to a lot of people, they kind of burst out laughing at me because yeah. you paid somebody an amount of money and you spoke to them for like a couple of minutes and then, then you essentially put the phone down and, and they sent you Reiki. But Honestly, it was the start of something really special for me and it, it was just such a relief. I can't, I can't describe it. It's just magical. I, I can't put words to it. It's just one of these things that you, it, it shouldn't work, but it does. Yeah, well, I don't really know why, but it, but it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I knew from that point on, I'm going to learn how how this works. And that's when I came to you for my Reiki One yeah. with a fantastic um, couple of ladies as well, who yeah. <laughs> was just great. Like, even though I didn't know them and I was obviously very anxious about that, being seen in front of people I don't know, there was just something special about the group that we had. And I could... Very much so. Yeah. Let go of things that I'd been holding on to for a very, very long time. So, yeah. yeah. And also that progressed into Reiki too, because I just couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> and you all decided to do it together as well, which was even <laughs> lovelier. Because I, I got you both two, twofold, so it was lovely. Um, and kind of, you know, within those couple of sessions, like obviously other stuff came up for you. Um. And so we kind of discussed working with eye movement therapy as well for some of the things that were obviously because of mental health stuff, just how can we help you with this? How can we help you explore to make things better? So you, obviously you were a little bit worried about a bit sceptical as well, like, well, you know, it's going to bring up all this stuff for me and I don't really want to. Um, so how did you find those sessions? Yeah, I think initially you're kind of thinking, especially in my case, I spent so much time in, in sort of survival mode that I really just didn't want to open a can of worms. Mm -hmm. But IEMT really isn't about the can of worms. It's about identifying sort of um, 
emotions or triggers that, that doesn't necessarily correspond to the memory that you had, but it shows up in later life in all different spheres. Yeah. So it was kind of interesting to kind of put the aha moment of this is why I'm feeling like this, but it is in a totally different setting with different people, if that makes sense. Mm. But it also, like, again, it's one of these things that you're sceptical of, you think, I don't know, waving a finger around my face is not going to help me whatsoever. I probably feel like an absolute idiot for sitting there doing it. But honestly, like, you'll say, like, a memory was at level 10, like, the worst possible thing ever. And then you'll go through the series of, um, you know, following your finger and stuff like that. And then you'll ask me, you know, the same thing again. How does that feel? You're just like, <laughs> oh, God. Like... And a lot of people kind of say, you know, oh, if I can count now and put a penny in a pot, that's weird. <laughs> you yeah. know, people really do go, I can't believe that, you know, and they're really, and it was the same, you know, for me, trying, desperately trying to find that that connection again to that because we're so used to it right mm -hmm. but it is it's like you think I think probably what my hesitation was because I'd been laboring for so long like trying to keep my emotions under wrap I really didn't want yeah you know to relive everything but it's not like that it's absolutely not like that and actually it's so easy like for the participant anyway, you think it's going to be a lot of hard work, but the hard work comes after when you're realising, you know, what the triggers are, why it is, and then formulating a plan to then make your life better from that point. Yeah, so it kind of releases you from that, like you say, that constant fight mode where you just feel like nothing is ever going to get through this. To bring it up a little bit more awareness of like okay now I know now that's gone now I've got space I can I can make a plan to kind of and it's not you know life isn't easy like stuff happens we think that often once we've got rid of that that's the thing right and then we find out what's underneath and so we decided you know to work or you decided to come work with me over like eight sessions and we're kind of nearly at the end of those sessions now um and you've had loads of changes, right? Loads of changes. It's miraculous. Um, because obviously when we first started, I didn't really have much hope for myself. Um, I had no kind of sense of direction where I wanted to go, what I wanted to be, anything like that. And although I'm still not sure what the future holds, no one ever knows what the future mm. holds. I feel so much more hopeful and positive as a result of kind of working one-to-one -one with you. Mm. And I think as well, having somebody there that keeps you accountable, which <laughs> um, like a, a very good one for masking a lot of the time and just saying, oh, you know, everything's fine. Um, but it's good when you have somebody that can pretty much see that you're not fine and ask the relevant questions mm. that you can actually explore what it is you're feeling and, and kind of get an understanding of why you feel like that yeah and like obviously show up on my Instagram as the horse whisperer because you're really like <laughs> amazing with horses which is incredible and it's just it's just so nice you know when you see that connection that return to that connection that you'd You'd lost a little bit, hadn't you, over a period of time? And I think that is the main thing, like through my sort of mental health struggles, the one thing that I really needed, I wasn't able to do. So pretty much for, I would say, a good 18 months, I wasn't really present at all uh, for my horse, which is devastating because horses is what I live and breathe. Mm -hmm. It was very unnatural for me to to feel like that but I think certainly with animals they just accept you for how you are um they're obviously um energetic beings so they can sense if you're happy or sad and yeah it was kind of difficult for me to show up in a way that I didn't want to uh, for my horse so that's the reason why I 
sort of stayed away from him. Yeah. Um, but now it's like I'm almost like reliving like my childhood in a sense where everything was all surrounding horses and making plans and doing things and yeah, just being around them and just doing silly things, not even like competing, because competing sometimes is a stressor in itself. You're essentially paying somebody to judge you, which is probably the last <laughs> thing you want. <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> even just like the playful things when I was young, I didn't get lessons. I just got on a horse and I went down the country lanes and had a gad about. And that's all it was for me, just me and my horse. I don't I don't need anything else. So yeah, I'm totally grateful to you to help me get back to that being... real connection back with him again. I can't wait yeah. to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> so if I asked you um kind of to give one word about how you felt when we first started to work together, particularly before IMT and the eight sessions, and how you feel now, like one word for each, how would you? Ter- it down. Terrified. <laughs> okay. Not, yeah. Not of you. Yes, <laughs> and because I just wasn't sure how. Sorry, my cat's about to join in. That's how okay. When it, I was just that tired with everything. I just didn't want to be labouring anymore. But I, sh- I needn't have worried about that. And coming to the end of the sessions like I'm a bit sad because well I'm still going to be working with you <laughs> but um grateful I think just so sorry so grateful to That's you all right. <laughs> everything that you've done for me I can't thank you enough and um I think anyone who is having like issues with their mental health um exasperated by how overworked and whatnot the NHS are um, and if you've got the capability you need to work with Emma because (laughs) she's brilliant. (laughs) Bless you and I promise I didn't pay you to say that (laughs) and it's so lovely Joan honestly to see you smile like you know when we first started to wear it was very kind of I'm just really scared and I don't really know what to do and it's just so lovely to see you back you know working with the horses and being on the farm and doing all the things that you love doing and seeing you smile it's great yeah no it's um it's you know life I I, before I didn't think life was worth living to be perfectly honest and um I see now that that was the wrong kind of way to think about it I just needed to adapt and change um Mm. and sort of realize quite a lot of what I was doing was keeping me stuck in in that place. Whereas I think with your guidance, I can now see that life is very much for living and just There's going always to... a way through. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me and all those beautiful words. I'll go and just rest in those for a little while. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. And I'm looking forward to seeing you really soon. Yes, I will see you soon. So you can kick my butt again. (laughs) (laughs) Take care, Joni. Thank you. Thank you.